All right, let's keep on tidying up these expressions. So the next property we're going to talk about is the distributive property. And we actually already kind of talked about this back way back when, when we talked about GCF and we rewrote it um, with the GCF and another sum. We're just going to build on that knowledge and give it a, a different name a little bit. So it's called the distributive property. And I'm going to read the definition, but it's really hard to understand until you see some examples. But I'm going to ha it, have it there just to help you along. So it says um, multiplying a number by a sum or difference. So this is only with adding and subtracting, but also uses multiplication. So there's two operations happening. So multiplying a number by a sum or difference is the same as multiplying by each number in the sum or difference and then adding or subtracting. So let me explain first, okay? And I got some arrows drawn here to kind of help you see this connection. So what we're saying is, this first expression is five times the sum of, remember how we practice that wording when we wrote expressions? Because it makes a big difference. And this is one of those times where we use that. So five times the sum of two plus six, this means you're taking the number times the whole entire sum. So you're gonna do the sum first and then multiply. However, you could multiply five times two and five times six to get 10 plus 30, and then add. So in that case, you're doing the multiplication first and then adding. Either way, you get the same answer. And I'll prove it to you. Two plus six gives you eight, so then you would have five times eight gives you 40. But if you do them individually, five times two gives you 10, five times six gives you 30, 10 plus 30 gives you 40. See, you get the same answer. So what they're saying is these two things are the same expression, they're equivalent because of the distributive property, okay? And I drew these arrows because that might help you understand how to use the distributive property. How I got this 10 and 30, I did 5 times 2, 5 times 6. Same thing down here, 4 times x to get 4x, 4 times 7 to get 28, and I'm just keeping that subtraction sign in there. So this one we wouldn't be able to solve unless we knew what x was, um, but it's still using that distributive property. Here's another one where the um, beginning part is 2x plus 6, but if I check over here, 2 times x gives me 2x, 2 times 3 gives me 6. So these are equivalent. Okay, so let's try using them now that you've seen some examples. So the first way is what I call the forward way, right? The like multiplying. Um, so you take that number that's outside the parentheses and you multiply pi it by everything in the parentheses. So let's try this first one. So we're going to do 4 times 5 and then plus 4 times y. So that's our first step, just to kind of show what we're doing. And if you want to draw those arrows kind of like I did up here, you're more than welcome to do that. That's completely up to you. But just don't forget to multiply that outside number by everything in the parentheses. So 4 times 5 plus 4 times y. Now if we actually solve that, which is what we want to do, we would end up with 20 plus 4y. So this would be the equivalent expression to our beginning expression. And really all three of these are equivalent to each other, but this is the end product we wanted was the 20 plus 4y. And you can see that's how we did it. 4 times 5 to get 20, 4 times y to get 4y. Okay, let's try another one. So this time it's 1 half times the difference of x minus 10. So we're going to start with 1 half times x. So we're just distributing the 1 half to the x. Then we're going to distribute the 1 half to the 10 to have 1 half times 10. So if I actually do that, I'm going to get 1 half x minus, well then think, half of 10 is 5. So I get 1 half x minus 5. And I kept the minus just all the way through because I didn't want to change anything. Same with over here, I just kept the addition all the way through. Okay. And since these are algebraic expressions, we can't go any further with them. Um, if they were only numeric, we could. But we're just focusing on rewriting the expression using distributive property. And we got one more here. We got the express, or the, I'm sorry, the variable on the outside here. And so we're going to distribute that n to the 8 and the 3. Again, if you want to draw in those arrows, feel free. But that would look something like this, um, n times 8 plus n times 3. And you can write this one of two ways. You can either write it just like this, where you have n8 plus n3, showing the multiplication. You can also write it like this, um, how we did up there, since there was nothing, like no actual multiplication to do. But personally, the way I like to write it is 8n plus 3n just to show that multiplication. Typically that coefficient goes in front and the variable behind it, um, but it doesn't really matter. So really any of these three would be acceptable. Okay, so that's the forward way of doing it. If you need to go back and take another look at something, feel free, but otherwise let's look at the what I call backwards way of doing it. And not that it's one versus the other or anything like that, it's just these are the two ways you could do it. So this is the way you've actually done before already, you just maybe didn't know this is what it was. So we are going to use the distributive property to write an equivalent expression, but this time 
we're going to work backwards. So this is kind of like the end expression that we had last time, right? Do you kind of see how it looks similar? I'll get it pulled up again if I can find it. See how it kind of looks like our end expressions after we distributed? But now we're going to work backwards this time. And we're going to start with this, and we're going to um, find the GCF of the two numbers, and what I call pull that out, really it's dividing, um, to rewrite it with the sum or difference, okay? And so we're using that distributive property to rewrite the sum or difference, just like you did before. So we're going to start with that division ladder that we learned way back when, or if there's another way that you want to try and find the GCF, that's up to you. Now, if you can do the GCF in your head, great, but if not, you can always do it in small chunks. So I happen to know that the GCF of 36 and 45 was 9. So I wrote 9 out here. 36 divided by 9 gives you 4. 45 divided by 9 gives you 5. So those are the pieces I'm left with. Well, now I take those pieces from my division ladder, and I write them with the GCF on the outside of the parentheses, and the rest of the sum on the inside. What I mean is, here's my GCF, that 9. So what they had in common, the greatest common factor, that got pulled out. And so now that was divided out, so it's 9 times, and then whatever's left. So after that 9 is pulled out, I have 4 plus 5. So 9 times the sum of 4 plus 5 is the exact same as 36 plus 45. Okay, let's try another one here. So if I look at 15x minus 25, I want to find the GCF. And when I look at them, I know, and I always look at the numbers first, because the variable doesn't matter unless they both have this, the exact same variable. And since they don't, right, this has x, this one doesn't, I'm not even going to worry about that. I'm going to look just at the numbers. So 15 and 25 both have a 5 in common. And so I treat that 15 just like normal. 15 divided by 5 would give you 3, but I just bring that x with it because I did not pull that x out. Okay, I did not divide that x by both numbers, so it needs to stay in there. And so that's a 3x. 25 divided by 5 just leaves me with 5. Okay, and so then when I go to write that as the new expression, my GCF is on the outside of the parentheses, and what's left over is on the inside. It's 3x, and it's minus this time. I'm just getting that from up here, 5. Okay. One more. When I look at 4y minus 9y, I notice that 4 and 9 do not have any common factors other than 1. However, they do have a variable in common, so that is their greatest common factor, is y. So then I'm just left with 4 and 9 after I take that y out, right? They're being multiplied, so when I divide the y, I'm just left with 4 and 9. And so I write it as uh, 4, oops, this one should say minus. Let me fix that real quick. Um, actually, you know, you just fix it. Um, I've got a setting on here that I can't fix it right now, okay? So it should be y times the difference. So this one should be subtraction. So make sure you do that, 4 minus 9, okay? So that's really how you do it. Um, one more little thing here. Now they want us to decide if these two expressions are equivalent, and if so, what properties did we use? So I'm going to look at this, and I see the multiplication with the parentheses like that, with the addition sign. So I'm going to try distributive first. And when I do that, I get 5x plus 35, so 5 times x, 5 times 7. So I get 5x plus 35, and when I look at that, that's very similar to 35 plus 5x. So that used the distributive property, but it also used the commutative property because it's in the opposite order. So going back to those properties we learned before. So we got 5x plus 35, flip it around, 35 plus 5x. So we first used distributive to get to this point, and then we used commutative to flip it around. Okay, let's look at one more, okay? So if I, again, I'm going to try distributive first because I see how the number's next to the parentheses and there's an addition or subtraction sign in here. So I know I'm not using associative, I'm using distributive because I've got multiplication and addition or subtraction. Okay, if it's associative, it's all addition or all multiplication, no subtraction. All right, so when I do that, I get 32 minus 8b, because I distribute that 8 to the 4 and to the b. Well, when I look over here, I've got 32 minus b, so that means that this is not equivalent because the 8 was not distributed to both numbers in the parentheses the way it was over here. So the 8's distributed to both, whereas this one, there was no 8b, so these are not equivalent. Okay? All right, you have some practice to go give it a try and um, see how you can do. If you need to go back and look at something else in the notes, feel free. Otherwise, move on to the practice. Don't forget to get a signature if needed.